You know, up until three years ago, you probably would have seen Harvey Weinstein at the Oscars tonight. That filmmaker has racked up dozens of Academy Awards. Now this week, however, he's in a New York City courtroom on trial for rape. And tonight, his movie fans will take a 360 look at whether we can still enjoy Weinstein's movies, although not convicted still, knowing what we know about him now. Can you separate the artist from the art? So we talked to an ethicist, a film studies professor, a comedy club owner, a sexual assault survivor, and to movie fans in tonight's Oscar Night 360. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Goodwill Hunting, Pulp Fiction, English Patient, Silver Linings Playbook, Kill Bill, all these beloved movies were made by Harvey Weinstein. The man on trial for rape, the man accused of predatory sexual abuse, assault, and coercion by more than 80 women. The man whose alleged actions launched the global Me Too movement. What do they call it? They call it the Royale with Cheese. Royale with Cheese. That's right. Weinstein's power in Hollywood until very recently was nearly unmatched. He founded Miramax Films and produced 200 plus movies that won 81 Oscars. I don't think it could be underestimated to say how much of an impact Harvey Weinstein had over his 40 year career. If Weinstein is the monstrous serial abuser he's accused of being, can we, should we, still enjoy his movies? Can you separate the artist from the art? I think you can separate artists from their art, but I think that you can't, you can't watch it without acknowledging that. Um, the person who created that is responsible for some horrible things. Can you still enjoy the movies knowing what we now know about Harvey Weinstein? Yes. No. Yes and no, I guess. Yeah, I don't really think about that he was behind them. Dr. April Alexander is a psychologist at the University of Denver who works with sex offenders and their victims. Some people can separate work from, uh, or art from life, uh, and others can't. Actresses in Weinstein films are among his accusers. By not separating uh, those two, uh, is thinking about what are we communicating to survivors of these acts? Uh, that uh, we don't believe them, uh, that these uh, individuals can go on and make more money um, off of their abuse. That's a question Hollywood filmmaker Trey Cartwright thinks about a lot. She teaches screenwriting at CU Denver. Because of Weinstein, her classes regularly discuss the bad behavior in Hollywood and the power of ethical movie fans. We certainly want to encourage everybody to be a responsible consumer, that if they don't feel like they can support um, somebody uh, who has done terrible things in our world, um, then, then don't give them your money. That doesn't mean that I will not watch it. This young woman has a more nuanced take. She's a survivor of sexual assault. She asks us to conceal her identity. I think that trying to separate the art from the artist is the wrong goal to have, but that doesn't mean that the art can no longer be seen or no longer enjoyed. She believes we should instead be working toward a world where our entertainment's not made by terrible people. I think that the goal should be a future where those people aren't allowed to be in those positions of power and be respected when they're committing those things. And I think we are moving towards that future. But she says she also understands this is the art we have now. So be considerate when enjoying it. The survivors of these people may experience trauma every single time they experience the art of this person. I think that doesn't mean you can't watch that movie or you can't like love Michael Jackson's music, but it's wrong to just ignore that that's also there. She makes a good point. I mean, this is the art we have, and it is easier said than done to just quit the stuff made by the bad guys. I mean, Les Moonves is behind Friends. Of course, Michael Jackson's music is still everywhere. Norman Mailer wrote 11 bestsellers. He tried to kill his wife. And you go back further, Gauguin was a pedophile, Degas an anti-Semite, Caravaggio killed a man, and on and on. So where do you draw the line? Wendy Curtis owns Denver's Comedy Works Comedy Clubs. In November 2018, representatives for comedian Louis C.K., who a year before admitted to sexual misconduct, asked if Louis could perform at her club during his comeback tour. I had to think long and hard about it. Before she made the decision, she reached out to one of Louis's victims. And I said, what would you, how would this make you feel if you saw him at my club? After what she heard, she told Louis no. Other clubs around the country did book him. I couldn't. I couldn't look myself in the mirror and do that. I'm sure I could do it and make a lot of money and be sold out in about 30 minutes. It just wasn't something that I felt like I could do. So are these artists dead to us forever? Dr. Alexander believes that should be decided by whether there was justice for the victims. Those who have served their sentences, um, have made amends, uh, can we accept them back into our culture and society? 
Well, if we're going for restorative justice, which is having a person accept accountability for their actions, then yes, uh, if that person did make amends, let's bring them back into um, you know, our popular culture. Curtis has similar feelings about Louis C.K., whom she considers a friend with enough time and the right apology. She says he should be let back in. I think that he needs to fess up and he needs to say, I'm sorry. And he needs to be part of the change. And he could very easily be part of the change. Maybe to you, the art is its own thing, independent of the artist. Or maybe art and artist are inseparable. Or maybe, try as we may, art makes hypocrites of us all. But for those who try to be ethical consumers, mindful of the victims, take heart. You are part of the change that's already happening. And a kinder, more aware society may be your masterpiece.